Good morning. It's good to take a break. To take a breath with all that you have going on in your lives. Now is the time to take a moment to tend your soul. And while doing this together as Holy Cross, it's the gateway into the abundant life, the resurrected life, as the paraclete we're going to hear, the one that walks alongside, the one that is gifted to us by the resurrected Christ, so that we would know that we are not alone every step that we take. So now, supported again by the resurrected word and sacrament, here are the five truths that I want you to hold within your soul, within your bones, and remember as you tend your spirit. You don't have to be perfect. Having a bad day is okay. Small steps are progress. And asking for help. We walk alongside of you. Go ahead and reach out to me as your pastor and to your church if you need help. Asking for help is strength. And the final truth is this. We love you. We love you and we appreciate you. Our little lives, our big problems, those we place upon Christ's altar now. The altar that he presides at and gives you and renews you anew in the promises of your baptism. Pour upon us whatever our spirits need of shock of life or release resurrected Christ, that we may find strength for these days, and now especially this day, courage and hope for tomorrow. In confidence, we rest in your sustaining grace, which makes possible triumph in defeat, gain in loss, and love in hate. There's hope. There's oxygen for the soul where there is forgiveness. Within you resides the resurrected Christ. Within you is stillness and grace, a sanctuary. We gather now near and far in a sanctuary. The sanctuary also resides within you, in your dining room now or in your living room. A sanctuary to which you can retreat to at any time. So now, dear Holy Cross, once again, welcome to your sanctuary. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's now get back to the abundant life. Let's get back to living. For God, God danced the day that you were born.
Once upon a time, we gather to hear and immerse ourselves and dwell in the greatest story ever told. And throughout the generations, once upon a time, there was a simple understanding that to sing at dawn and to sing at dusk was to heal the world with joy. We hear, we still, we still believe in this. And the birds, they still remember what some of us have forgotten. That the world, the abundant life that Christ came to give us, is meant to be celebrated. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. why 
he sent us Jesus. And that's why he brought Jesus back to life. So that we would have the paraclete, the advocate, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit walking alongside us. Bringing wholeness. Emotional, physical, mental, and spiritual wholeness. As God walks with us, journeys with us, alongside us, especially when we're feeling depressed, anxious, and hopeless. If this is you, and it certainly is me from time to time, my prayer is that you would be made whole now again in the Word and Sacrament. Be well, dear church, is a prayer for you, my friends, my siblings in Christ. Kids, from time and space, we are all called together. We are all called together. From one side to the other, we will hear of three distinct persons, but of great oneness. One, two, three, with a carpenter's nail. One fork would not be able to stand alone on my finger. We could not balance. Two forks would not be able to. And then I like to think of this as Christ Jesus our Lord, the one that walks alongside we are community. We are family. We are siblings. Whenever I talk to my kids, I always ask their, their friends have siblings. We all have siblings. In community with the Trinity, I know that's a complicated and probably a word you've never heard of, but I will teach you about that in confirmation. We create something new. The Holy Spirit is creating something new within us, and it is, right now in this moment, amazing, and will be so forevermore. So, if you're at home right now, kids, Go ahead, you have permission from me to ask for a treat. Because usually in this moment, you would get a sucker from Pastor Noah. church is to encourage us with the word. And so I commence to you Acts 17, and it's Paul's message to the Athenians. In Athens, Paul faces the challenge. And don't we all face a challenge right now? Paul faces a challenge, and he faces the challenge as he proclaims the gospel to the Greeks of his time, who know nothing of either the Jewish or the Christian tradition. So he started from ground zero. And a lot of times I'm feeling like that in the midst of all the uncertainty. But he carries on. He keeps his head up and he proclaims that the unknown God of the time, whom they worship, is the true Lord of heaven and earth. The same earth that is in now deep search for a vaccine. This same world is lorded over by the true Lord of heaven and earth who will 
judge who will walk alongside and make a judgment. And this judgment will be made with justice. And it will be made through the grace of Jesus, whom God has raised from the dead. Psalm 66 is, Bless our God, you people. Bless our God, you peoples. Let the sound of praise be heard like those birds in the morning. And First Peter, the days of Noah. Go ahead, read it. First Peter 3. And there is a sign, a promise, there is a sign of baptism. And the author of First Peter encourages Christians to remain faithful, even in the face of defamation and persecution and great challenge, First Peter encourages Christians, encourages us now in our time to remain faithful. For in our baptisms, we are made clean. And what are we made clean to do? We are made clean to act in accordance with what is right. And now, in this moment, we hear of the paraclete, the promise of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Gospel according to John John 14, Christ, our advocate. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. If, for whatever reason, what God was doing on behalf of all of us through Jesus was not enough, there would be another advocate, a paraclete. This is the spirit of truth. The truth in the midst of the uncertainty, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides in you, and he will be in you. He will be in you. These are his final words to his disciples on the night of his arrest. And what does Jesus do? He encourages obedience. He encourages faithfulness in the midst of great difficulty. Obedience to his commandments. To love. To love one another as he showed love. And he speaks of the Spirit. The one who will be with his disciples and you and me forever. So he speaks of the Spirit whom he promises will be with us forever. A lot of walking. A lot of walking will do you good. As the one promised walks alongside. Supported by the Spirit, a lot of walking is also good. With the resurrected Spirit with you and within you, walk. Siblings in Christ, walk. Walk away from arguments that lead you to anger and nowhere. I was thinking about that this week. Sometimes we just have to walk. Sometimes we just have to walk away with the one who promises to be with, to walk alongside. Walk away from people who deliberately put you down. God's beloved. Walk away from the practice of always being a people pleaser. Ooh, for whatever reason, that is me to the core. Walk away from any thought that undermines your peace of mind. Walk away from judgmental people, the ones that lead their lives not by grace but by judgment. Remember, Paul says, Jesus comes to judge, but judge in grace. Those who judge us, they don't know what we're struggling with. They don't know what we're facing and what we've been through. So sometimes we need to walk. Walk away from your mistakes. Be kind to yourselves. Walk away from your fears, for they do not determine what is coming your way. They do not determine your fate in this moment. And remember, Jesus promises the Spirit forever. So in this moment and forever, your faith, your fears and mistakes do not define you. The more you walk away from things that poison your soul, 
the more you will feel the promised resurrected spirit given to you anew in this holy meal that we partake together in a moment. That is then with and within you forever. Amen. us along the way. The peace of the risen Christ 
be with you always. And may this give you the peace that surpasses all understanding wherever you are in this moment. Let's not take each other for granted. If you are there with a loved one, make sure you share with them a sign of peace with a grateful heart. As we get our hopes up, as we get our faith up, we look up and we get ready to rise up for the days ahead. And we do so reciting the greatest story, our story, that dwells within our hearts now. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended and dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. So, we're praying together in this moment. And we know we don't need to fold our hands or bow all the time in reverence, in conversation with one another, in our thoughts, when we bring them to mind. Those are our prayers as well, and so we do so in this moment. And I want you to think about how you would fill these blanks, and you can write them in your comments now. How would you fill these blanks to express your longings for a more godlike, the God that we know in Scripture, the one who judges with grace. How would you express your longings? What does your heart long for in these days? Fill the blanks. I need a God that isn't. Blank, blank, blank. I need a God right now in my life. For you have it, but it's good to call it to mind. I need a God that isn't. And as you express, Know that we stand in solidarity with you. And finally, I need a God that is blank, blank, blank. Go ahead and share. And as you do so, we continue to pray for Andrews Breidenbach and Roger Colquist. Blank, blank, blank. Any others? that you need to be praying for in these moments. And please reach out to Jess in the office or myself throughout these days with your specific needs. And you can also post them in the comments now. I need a God that isn't. I need a God that is. And know that these requests are met with the gift of the Son. We're the church. And as a church, we stand for the environment. We stand to protect God's creation. We're doing the best we can in these moments. We're just not concerned for ourselves, but we care for the poor. This is what you are supporting. And again, I want to thank you for that. We forgive often, led by grace. This is the kind of life, the abundant life that you are supporting. We forgive often. We reject every form of racism. We fight for the powerless. We share earthly and spiritual resources with our neighbors. We embrace diversity. We love God. And we enjoy this life. Again, I welcome you to go to Holy Cross, the Luth backslash give, to continue our walk together. Thank you for your ongoing and beautiful, great and grand support. Now, we gather in this moment of sanctuary, now at the altar, as we are resealed and the promises are our baptism, shine through us now in this meal. And be so in us that every soul that we come in contact with in our lives may feel your spirit within our soul. The Lord be with you. 
with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Sanctuary, solitude, a simple gown, a piece of paper and a pen, a cup of tea, a piece of toast, a window and the Holy Ghost, some calm, a table and a chair. The mind now is free, the soul is bare. There's love to make and life to hold, the ancient tiny thread of gold that runs through all the joy and bloom is found inside. Now the promise is bestowed to you now in this room. distancing 
my girls say, air hug, air hug to their friends. So, from your pastor, from the sanctuary, air hug, siblings in Christ. Come, we that love the Lord.
and what can go right. I'm very proud to be your pastor, to be a shepherd in your life, walking with you as the one, the promised one, walks alongside us as well, celebrate the grace, grow in faith, and make a difference for God. Hold fast, dear ones, and God be with you till we meet again. Thank you.